Uh, joining us via Skype from London is an African Affairs Analyst, Jermaine Sonwolu. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. I wonder how uh, shocking this comes to you, this uh, revelation of uh, diversion of half, that's 50% of food meant for IDPs in the Northeast, uh, ended up only being diverted. Uh, what could government have done really to prevent this kind of situation in the first place? Well, thanks a lot for having me this morning. Well, this is a very, very shocking situation in, that is going on in the northeast in Nigeria. Yes, we must commend the president and this president administration for initiating um, the presidential initiative on the northeast to try and uh, ameliorate some of the suffering that is experienced by many people who were affected by the Boko Haram um, atrocities and um, rage that they actually had in that part of the country. Now, one expects that um, people who are meant to be caring for people who have been internally displaced because of these activities will actually be empathic and will have some conscience within themselves to be able to take care of their needs. But what we see right now is one of the highest levels of corruption in Nigeria that has been revealed by this um, administration. This is not just corruption regarding money, but corruption that is affecting people who are suffering. We hear about the Situation through um, um, Baba, um, the secretary to the government of the federation um, suspended now, uh, Baba Chelawal, who was implicated, who was um, allegedly implicated by the Senate um, for um, the misappropriation of funds and breaching of the Public Procurement Act, which was close to in the tune of up to 400 um, million um, naira, 220 million for his own company, um, Roller Vision, and also um, Jack Josh Moss Technology that collected money and now transferred it to account in some matter of days. You will see that there's corruption from the top and it's now going on the grassroots, on the bottom. Food that is meant to be given to people to eat, to survive, <laughs> is now being diverted to personal fund, personal use, and I'm sure it's being sold in the market. We must know that the ground men taking um, action will not do anything without the um, direction from their guys on the top. Yes. So there must be an investigation from the top to the bottom, and they must clear this system. And I must commend Vice Acting Vice President, Acting President Professor Shibajo for doing an excellent work in actually trying to fight this um, um, corruption. All right, Jame, but the Acting President hasn't done anything specifically different because the same actors were the same one accused for diverting this um, food or molesting even the IDP campers. Mm -hmm. the, so the NEMA is still involved. The, the NEMA is in, involved. In, in the it. police is involved. Mm. The soldiers are also involved. So what? what what has it done differently, really? Well, um, as you mentioned earlier, it's the deployment of over 2,000 security personnel to be guarding these grains in the right direction. And it's now for once coming out to the open and exposing the atrocities going on here. Before, as um, um, the military personnel said in the studio, said they had heard about it um, maybe by the bylines or so, but now it is now being brought to the, to, to, to the forefront. The presidency is now saying that we are aware of this and we are going to tackle this. Before, it was just kept under on, 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 on on, on, that, um, on, that low, on a low-key level. I believe the Vice President wants to see transparency. He's calling for, for accountability. He's ensuring that people are held responsible for the action. And one thing that he must do right now is to persecute those people who have been caught um, siphoning um, um, almost half of the resources um, to private hands. That's what they must do right now. So he's done a little, but that little is the first step in the right direction, in my opinion. There are also reports that even the IDP campers themselves sometimes smuggle food out of the camp to sell. <laughs> so how do you help them? Well, that is also another sad situation too that we've heard about in the um, in that in, in the IDP camp. But the reality now is that there has to be a holistic supply chain management um, um, procedure that must be put in place to ensure that from the deployment of these resources to the arrival at um, at the end user, there must be transparency throughout. Now, more than just security personnel um, guarding these um, um, trucks, over 1,000 leaving, you understand, there must also be a, a, a change in attitude. That corruption mentality must, must, must be driven away from that whole process. Because who is who is saying that some of these security personnel, um, God forbid, will now be trying to be influenced to also divert these things? Because we have seen situations like that with the case of the 
police and all that. Mm -hmm. So we have to ensure that there's a change in mindset, apart from having security guarding it, corruption must be removed from even the security personnel and even everyone on ground. Those people that are serving the food and those people who are giving um, the opportunity to be able to distribute the food um, and the grains to the people. And they must ensure that none of these grains are sold in the black market um, that, um, in the surrounding areas. This is not just a failure in terms of um, um, security, but it's also, it also exposes the broader level of corruption. There has to, it has to be ensured that everybody that, is, that needs the help, is, the help is actually gotten to them. They can receive the food they need, they can get the right rations, and when you look at the grains, they actually weighed, and the right amount of rations is actually delivered, not what is sent at maybe like 50 tons, and they now get 20 tons, and they will say it has been delivered. Everything must be scrutinized, and they must have people that are going to investigate it all throughout the way on the supply chain. Okay. Uh, Jamin, you are aware that Nigeria has the highest out-of-school children as we speak, over mm, 10, 10 million, million children of out of school. Yeah. Uh, well, no thanks to the insurgency and those who are at the IDP camp. Now, we are planning to get them back to their society, get them back to their homes. What can we do to help these children? Great. Thank you very much for that question. I believe um, youth empowerment is something that uh, has been on the forefront of this administration, but has also been a great problem um, when it comes to the Nigerian certain. Uh, uh, most of our population, over 60%, are youth. And all this, as you said, 10 million p um, young people who are out of school right now, it shows potential crisis that could be brewing, because this is the generation of people who are going to be uneducated and unskilled to enter the workforce, which will lead to a lot of problems in the future. Right now, they empowerment program that the government has actually set in place is actually a good initiative. It's going to be empowering people with, with skills and all that. But apart from just that empowerment um, process, what is the timeline of people um, from entry to exit in the IDP camps? What is the plan? Are they, just, are they just going to be staying there indefinitely? Or do they have a plan to reallocate, um, to relocate them and also house them? What developments are being made? What structures are being built in the northeast area that were um, devastated by Boko Haram insurgency then? Are they building houses for these people to move into? Or they're just leaving them there and trying to empower them? They said that yeah. if you give a man a fish, you will feed him for one day. But if you teach him how to fish, you, you will I can empower his, him and his whole community for a lifetime. So mm. it's good to supply grains to them right now, but the empowerment must just leave um, giving them skills on how to sew, how to um, do soap making, how to do all these kind of um, petty trading skills yeah. to actually ensuring that they're actually located to the, the real market system whereby they 